Hello guys, this is Adip. Welcome to my channel Movement Science where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. In today's video, we are going to talk about the ribcage articulations, all the articulations that occur at the ribcage and we will split this topic into two parts. So without any further ado, let's get started. So today we are going to cover the ribcage articulation and these are the articulations present at the ribcage and we will cover the first four okay the manubrio sternum, ziphi sternum and costovertebral and costotransverse joint. So let's start with the manubrio sternum also known as the sternal angle okay. So if you can see over here this is the manubrium, this is the sternal body and this is the ziphoid process okay. So the place where your manubrium and the sternal body joins is your manubrio sternal joint and the place where sternal body and the ziphoid process meets is your ziphi sternal joint okay or the articulation. Both of these joints are synchondrosis joint. What does that mean? It has a fibrocartilaginous disc between them and the articulating surfaces are lined by hyaline cartilage. These joints are very similar to your symphysis pubis seen at the pelvis joint. Both of these joints they ossify later in life at around 40 to 50 years of age. So that's all we have for these joints. Now let's have a look at these joints on a real bone set. If you can see over here this is your manubrium, this is the sternal body and this is the ziphoid process right and where your manubrium and the sternal body meets this is the joint that's the sternal angle formed over here right manubrio sternal joint and then here is the ziphi sternal joint. So now that we have covered the main manubrio sternum and ziphi sternal joint let's move on to the costovertebral joint. So moving on to the costovertebral joint we have a synovial joint over here so if you can see over here this is your rib cage right from behind and this is your vertebral body and where the rib where the rib meets the vertebral body that is your costo that is rib and vertebral joint okay and at the same area if you go slightly behind the transverse process of the same vertebral body will articulate with your rib right so that is your costo transverse joint which we will cover in the next video so it is a synovial type of joint and it is obviously covered by the capsule as you can see over here and also over here for the transverse joint. Where does the articulation happen? It happens between the head of the rib as you can see this is the head of the rib and it articulates with two adjacent vertebral bodies that is this vertebral body and the one above it. So that visualization will be easier if we look at it on a real bone set. So we will come to that quickly but before that I'll just cover this part okay. So the two adjacent vertebral bodies will articulate with the head of the rib and also the disc in between. So if you can see the head of the rib over here, it has a superior articulating facet and an inferior articulating facet. So the superior one will articulate with the vertebra above it and the lower one will articulate with the vertebra below it and in between there will be the disc. So if we go into the details of articulation, we first need to realize that there are two types of costovertebral joint. There is a typical costovertebral joint and there is a atypical costovertebral joint, okay. Now the ribs from 2 that is T2 thoracic 2nd vertebra to all the way to thoracic 9th vertebra, all these ribs they form a typical costovertebral joint with the bones, okay. And ribs 1, 10, 11, 12 they form the atypical costovertebral joint. Now, first we'll have a look at the typical costovertebral joint. If you see over here, I mentioned the head of the fourth rib. So we'll take an example of the fourth rib and see how the articulation happens, okay. So this is the head of the fourth rib and on top there is a superior facet as you can see superior facet of the head and then below there is the inferior facet of the head. So these are the two articulating surfaces of the rib and they will articulate with your vertebral body correct. So the superior facet will articulate with the inferior facet of the T3 vertebral body right. 
and the inferior facet will articulate with the superior facet of the T4 vertebral body. So the fourth rib will articulate with the fourth vertebral body with its inferior facet. Okay. Once we have a look at the bone model, it will be much more easier to visualize. So we'll move to the bone set. Now, if you have a look at the costo vertebral joint, we have our two thoracic vertebras and the rib, right? So the rib, if you can see, this is the head of the rib and these are the two articulating surface. This is the superior and this is the inferior one. So the superior articulating surface will articulate with the inferior part of the vertebra above it. So over here, like this. And the inferior part will articulate with the articulating surface over here, like this. So if I have to put it together, both the thoracic vertebras, right, will be fitting like this. There will be disc in between over here and the coastal vertebra uh, yeah, over here. That's where it will fit. And if you can see, this is the transverse process, right? These are the transverse processes and they have these articulating facets over here, right? The surfaces, articulating surfaces. That's where the costo transverse articulation will happen like this. You can see the tubercle over here. It will come and attach over here. So that is the costo transverse as well as costo vertebral articulation. Okay, so now that you have understood the typical costo vertebral joint, now let's move on to the atypical costo vertebral joint. Over here, it is more mobile compared to your typical costo vertebral joint. And why is that? Because the rib articulates with only one vertebra. So there is more range of motion. And if you look at the ligaments present in this area, there is the radiate ligament which is present and interosseous ligament which is normally present in the typical costo vertebral joint is absent in the atypical costo vertebral joint. Which brings us to the ligaments present at the typical costo vertebral joint. There is the interosseous ligament which forms cavity by joining the crest of the rib and the annulus fibrosis of the disc. Okay. Apart from that, we also have radiate ligament which has three bands. Okay. There is the superior, there is intermediate and inferior band and the inferior band specifically, it joins your vertebral body, the inferior vertebral body with the rib. So these are the major ligaments and the articulation present at the costo vertebral joint. Now let's move on to the costo transverse joint. So coming to the costo transverse joint, if you can see, this is the transverse process of the vertebral body and it articulates with the rib. So this is our costo transverse joint. Again, if you see on the other side, it is covered by capsule. So it is a synovial joint with capsule around it. And the articulation happens between, can you guess, the tubercle of the rib that is over here and the transverse process, the facet present on the transverse process. So that's where the articulation happens at the corresponding vertebra. So now that we have understood the exact articulation, let's move on to specific details of it. So we have total 10 articulations that is the costo transverse articulations present and these can be divided into first six that is from T1 to T6 and then from T7 to T10. From T1 to T6 what is seen is that these facets present on the transverse process over here are concave as you can see and the tubercles present at the rib are convex in nature. So these are concave convex articulations and they allow some amount of rotation movement over here. Whereas if you go lower, that is from T7 to T10, the articulating surfaces are pretty much flat and they allow gliding motion to happen. Okay, So gliding motion is dominated at the lower, the T7 to T10 and rotation movements are present at T1 to T6. So now that we have understood articulation, let's go to the final part that is the ligaments present in this area. So radiate ligament we already covered in the last part, right? Now over here we have costo transverse ligament and there are two more that is the lateral costo transverse and superior costo transverse ligament. So the costo transverse ligament, it joins basically the neck of the rib right that is present over here if you can see this is the rib and this is the neck of the rib and it goes and attaches to the transverse process of the same level of the thoracic vertebra 
Next is the lateral costal transverse ligament. So this ligament attaches the lateral portion of the costal tubercle right over here and it goes and attaches to the tip of the transverse process that is over here right at the same level. So that's the lateral costal transverse ligament and finally we have the superior costal transverse ligament. What it does is it joins the crest of the neck of the rib to the inferior edge of the transverse process of the vertebra above it. So if you can see this is the superior costal transverse ligament. Over here I am mistaken with two. So it basically joins the crest of the neck to the inferior border of the transverse process of the vertebra above. Yeah. So with that we finish off this topic. Now let's quickly summarize it. So first we started with the ribcage articulations where we saw all these articulations. The costochondral, costosternal and interchondral will be covered in the next video. Right? We saw manubrial sternum and the ziphi sternum. They are concave from inside by the way and they ossify at a late stage. Next we moved on to costovertebral joint where we saw the ribs articulating with the vertebral body and under costotransverse we saw the rib articulating with the transverse process of the vertebral body. Right? So with that we finish off this topic. That's all for today guys. Thank you for watching.